Yo, what's up everybody? This is Reese here from C Manga and welcome to my review of One Piece Chapter 736, Chief Executive Diamante. So you know what? I actually did enjoy this chapter quite a bit, you know? It's kind of reminding me a lot of like how the Water 7 arc went, you know? It just kind of has a similar type of vibe. It's all the kind of running that was going on in this and like all the kind of like, fuck it, I'm just breaking straight through this. But anyway, um, Coliseum wise, the finals have finally begun. Um, weird one though. This part actually did kind of like, not confuse you, but it's like a bit inconsistent wise. Um, the guys who were obviously defeated in D block by Rebecca, they were like, you know, they come running out trying to contest the result of it. Like, you know, oh yeah, there's no way I'm accepting this. There's no way she won. She can't win. And everyone's like, yay, Rebecca can't win. Yeah, fight her again, which is obviously like, because they hate her. But anyway, um, what's kind of weird about that is I swore that after you lost, they basically just threw you straight into the toy pit. You know, you just went straight in there straight away, like Victor goes somewhere else, losers go bye bye into the pit, you're gonna go to the toy factory, get turned into toys. Um yeah, so that was kind of like a weird one. How the hell did they get out so easily and run off? But either way, um Damante he's on hand basically like just put him back in their place and his powers ended up getting revealed in the meantime, which yeah, they're kind of weird. Just like kind of the um way they work. So, he can make anything he touches flow like cloth, basically. Something like this, the flutter, flutter fruit, basically, kind of thing. Um, the example of it was obviously like his cape, uh, which he, obviously when the guys tried to stab him, it was like, nope, that ain't gonna work because it's as hard as steel. It's actually steel. So, it's kind of a bit, okay, a bit weird. So, in terms of combat, we kind of seen how it works offensively with the whole sword thing. You turn it into the weird bull head and then smash the guys into the face. But, my thing is, how exactly is it going to work 100% defensively? Obviously, he's got his like, kind of cape as his shield kind of thing. But what if they get past that? You know, surely if he gets hit by something and he turns it into the kind of flutter of stuff, surely he'll still get hit by it kind of thing. So it's kind of weird unless his powers literally turn whatever the heck he touches have the same properties as cloth. So it's kind of like free flowing and light as well. So it's just like what getting slapped in the face of a sock or something like that you know maybe that's exactly what his powers do I guess after once they finally fully get explained in this match then I have a bit more to talk about with them but yeah at the moment it's just a bit strange how it's going on but anyway rules for the finals is again kind of a bit strange like the format of it it's like so obviously the same format as before the whole battle royale five on five you know five people battle royale just screw everything up free for all um, but now they have like stronger fighting fish you're like you know obviously the cream of the crop of each school they're like super super strong and they react to blood they don't give a shit they'll kill you um, the mirror mirror fruit is on the back of one of them they don't know which one um, what's well, kind of weird that only one of them actually does have the barrel on their back surely if they wanted to kind of spice it up a bit more they would have put like barrels on all their backs and then you definitely don't know which one it is but anyway um, whole point is you got to steal it from the back of the fish the only thing is I swear that if you fall into the water, doesn't that mean that you're disqualified? So, and these fish are only in the water, so it's kind of like, what the hell? You gotta steal it, or I'm guessing that obviously they're gonna try and go for the whole last man standing thing. That's like the main staple of it. So, someone could try and go to steal it, but at the end of the day, if they get fucked up by everyone else here, yeah, if you're the last guy standing, you haven't stole it, you still win. So, I guess kind of that's more like what they're going for. But if there's a chance that you can steal it. If you want to go fight the fish. But yeah, it's kind of weird. So it's like, if they're dropping the water, surely they're out. So would they have to kind of like get the fish onto the platform to take it? Or are they going to have to like piss off the fish, make it jump out, and then use some crazy dodging ability to grab it off the top of its back without getting touched? Stupid craziness like that. So anyway, elsewhere, this is where the good stuff is. Obviously, uh, Mr. Soldier, he's just basically getting the shit beaten out of him by Lao G. Lao Ji, he's a really strange guy. Uh, he apparently, he was there just because he got mixed up while waiting for, while waiting in the entrance for them. He ended up going in the lift and then ended up back down there. He's a really strange guy. He's just really weird. He's kind of quirky and everything. But yeah, um, Mr. Soldier, he pretty much seems completely outclassed here. I don't know how the hell he's gonna kind of like come back from this because like Lao Ji's just like bam, you're nothing. Even all the like little. Um, what are they little gnome people dwarfs that's what they are even all the little dwarfs they're trying it and they're still getting like beat down and crap so it's like seriously guys 
you're completely outclassed here. Unless Mr. Soldier has like something crazy up his sleeve or he's gonna come like out with a crazy desire to succeed, gives him more power type thing. I see him kind of not getting through this battle unless someone comes to rescue him. Who that person will be, I'm not too sure. It'd probably be Frankie considering how he's pretty much right outside the toy factory anyway, so yeah, but then again, he still has to deal with Seno Pink and then, uh, God, the other guy who turned up as well. So, everyone's kind of got their hands full. The only ones who kind of, like, aren't really that busy, I would say, are Robin and um, Usopp. So, yeah, maybe Usopp can come to his rescue and give him a hand. Maybe we'll finally show off, like, yeah, Usopp's now really, really strong. He's not just a class clown anymore. He's actually got some strength behind him. So, yeah, um, that's going to be a weird one to see what happens there with Mr. Soldier. And finally, obviously, Luffy's team, they're making some headway, uh, end up getting discovered because Luffy basically got bored of trying to sneak through everywhere. He's like, fuck it, we're going straight through here, smashing through this door. He's like, yep, now we can go here. Um, I guess it does make it into a much more interesting read. But yeah, uh, Mingo, he's completely confused now because he's just like, what do you mean Straw Hat Luffy's in being an intruder? He's supposed to be like in the Coliseum. I'm watching him right now. Obviously, that being Sabo, so... Yeah, it's going to be kind of interesting there to see what happens, you know, like obviously him getting kind of super pissed to see what his reaction is going to be. Because obviously, end of the chapter now, um, ends with obviously like them not running into, I think, is it Pitta or Pinta? Either way, Pinta, the guy who um, Violet's there like warning him about saying, oh, we best not run into this guy. Um, Pinta, he seems like, I'm kind of like speculating here, but I'm guessing he's like a giant dude with a devil fruit ability to kind of merge with objects. Uh, so it's just because like the way he came out that wall obviously he had a proper face so he's not kind of like a weird golem type thing um but yeah he kind of seemed like it was part of that wall so i'm willing to bet it's one of them weird things that he can take on the properties of anything he touches so obviously with the stone wall he, he touches that his whole body turns to stone kind of like the thing he can probably touch metal turn it to steel i'm not sure who the heck where i've seen that ability before it was either in one piece or x-men or yeah some one of them you know, but it's that type of ability, so, yeah, I'm kind of guessing, like, the way I kind of see this happening, though, is, I'm seeing him getting, like, beating a crap, getting a crap beating out of him, why, because, well, he's taking on, what, the two top members of the Straw Hat crew right now, Luffy and Zoro, Kidamon's there as well, you know, he's obviously proved himself to be kind of a bit, quite, quite decent, um, so, yeah, I'm kind of, like, envisioning them lot, just, like, running up to him still, he's there, like, oh, yeah, you can't beat me, and then they just both smash him out of the way, and he's gone, you know, it's kind of be a kind of funny thing. It's like Oda, he's done that loads of times before. You know, just like, oh yeah, you're in my way, get out of my way. So that's how I'm kind of guessing it's gonna go. But yeah, I guess next chapter gonna be kind of interesting. Hopefully, we get to see some more of the finals. You know, see, I want to definitely see what Sabo can do. And yeah, I want to see like how the hell they're gonna deal with Pinta. I don't really give too many craps about Mr. Soldier. So yeah, they can kind of brush over that quick. I don't really want to see a whole another chapter on him. Not a very interesting character. But yeah, next week, next chapter should hopefully be pretty good. So yeah, as you can tell guys, I pretty much enjoyed this chapter, you know, but let me know what you guys thought of this chapter. Let me know in your comments below. As usual, if you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up. Helps out a lot. And don't forget to check out the other stuff we do on the channel. So I'll see you next time.